We got Matthew Lopez back here on the program. He's going to be taking on Brad Katona at UFC 231 on December 8th. Matt, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to be on your on your show. Yeah, well, I appreciate you always uh, taking the time, man. Now, I see you're in your truck. Uh, where are you headed to right now? What's on the agenda for this uh, Thursday? So I just uh, had a Cairo appointment, uh, got adjusted a little bit, and then my old jiu-jitsu coach is here for the fights in Denver. So I came to the hotel to see him and a couple of the guys. And so I'm at the fighter hotel. Oh, good stuff. Yeah, I, I guess. Are, are you part of fight week? Any of your teammates competing this weekend? Uh, no, none of my... I'll be there to uh, to see the show. I'm sure a little bit disappointed you, you didn't get on this card because you know obviously I uh, don't have to trek too far to to go to uh, to fight or anything. Yeah, definitely disappointed. I, I you know I had a big I wanted to I I gave my manager a big push to get me on this card. Um, sleeping in your own bed and being in your own town is 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 super easy. But um, I'm still happy that I got a fight uh, in Toronto. I love Toronto. Yeah, I was going to say, you had one of your best performances in Toronto uh, against Mitch Gagnon, so I guess that probably brings back some good memories of that night when you got that big win. That was your uh, first UFC win, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir, it was. Yeah, uh, but just, just Toronto, I was just talking to Lance Palmer about it right now. Uh, Toronto is just an awesome place. It's it's like a smaller New York City, but so clean, everybody's friendly, it's just kind of cold there, so. Yeah, well, I mean, nothing new for you uh, being in Colorado. Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Um, let's. Uh, we, we haven't seen you in the cage just since April. Uh, you mentioned wanting to get on the Denver card. Were you looking to get in there a little bit sooner, even before that, or did you want that much time off? No, I didn't. That wasn't by choice. That was. Uh, it was good though, because I, I got to heal up and 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 take care of some things. But uh, I would have rather have been in there sooner. They offered me the the humble fight in, re, in was it Sao Paulo or wherever that was at. But um, I turned it down just because I didn't think that would be a smart move being on a, uh, you know, 0 streaking and then going to fight a former champion in his hometown. So, um, and then I was just put on the sidelines for a little while. So, uh, yeah, I'm just happy to get be back in there. Yeah, that's interesting. I, you know, and I agree with you here. Uh, you know, oftentimes when you have to travel, uh, you know, really far, you only get one cornerman. And then, like you said, you were taking on a former champion. Um, you know, I mean, I, you know, just talk to me about that decision because I know that for some fighters, you know, they'll take any fight, but you got to be careful what happens in your career. And, and that's the thing. Like, uh, you, as a fighter, you almost have this persona where I'm the baddest and I'll fight anybody, anytime, anywhere. Um, but when you're, when your career's on the line, when your job's on the line, you have to be more, a little bit more uh, cerebral about it and, and think these things through. And not the fact that I thought I was going to lose or any, by any chance, you know, I, I, but I just figured if, if I was to go out there and be successful, I would have to, you know, I and they could have given it to Burrell, you know, I, I can't remember the guy he fought, but um, he could have easily lost that fight. Uh, so yeah, you just you just got to think those kind of things through, and 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 I would have fought him. I really would have fought him anywhere else in the in the world except Brazil. So yeah, I, I can respect that. Um, your last fight, I know, uh, didn't go your way against Alejandro Perez. Uh, what did you take away from that performance that you can bring into this fight? Uh, my biggest thing that I took away from that was not being such a fucking hard, stubborn-headed guy. You know, I went through a lot of adversity for that camp and that being in my in my home state, like there was just no no way I was gonna pull out of that fight and um I should have listened to my coaches and and a hat hats off to him, but I was a better fighter than him. I showed that in the first round. Um I dominated every position in the first round, striking and grappling. And um he he caught me with a, a good knee in the second round and 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 put the fight away. So hats off to him. But one hundred percent, I'm a better fighter, and and, and I'll, I'll show that December eight. So they tell you you're fighting Brad Katona. Did you know much about him? Like, were you familiar with him from winning the Ultimate Fighter and everything? So I was. I didn't. I didn't watch the Ultimate Fighter, um, but I watched the Ultimate Fighter finale, and I remember him fighting. But he wasn't on my radar, or like uh, I didn't consider him to be in the next fight. So there was no, I wasn't like zoned in on him. And, uh, yeah, I, I remember he dropped the guy with a couple left hands, I believe. Um, 
but that's kind of that's all kind of all I remember. I don't remember a lot of his technique or or whatever. But um, shit, he just won the Ultimate Fighter at a weight up. He's undefeated, so you know you got to give this guy. You got to take him seriously. Do you watch tape on your opponents, or do you leave that, leave that up to your coaches? No, I leave that up to my coaches. I did that for my first three fights as a pro, like, and it would keep me up at night. And I would just my sole focus was on uh, the things that I saw him do in previous fights, and and it was making me a lot of it was giving me a lot of hesitation during my fights because I was worried about certain techniques. So um, now Trevor re- watches uh, film. And Trevor's a genius when it comes to training for someone as far as like, he doesn't say, Hey, this guy's going to throw an overhand right. Or this guy's got a good grappling. So we got to work on this. Or he never meant, he never once said my opponent's name in this training camp. And, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't plan for one specific thing. He, he plants these seeds and these tools. He gives you them with for training for that, that particular fight without you knowing like, Hey, this is what he's going to do, and now my thought process is is all focused on that one thing. He gives you so many different tools and, and and ways to go about it that you don't even know you're fighting for, or you don't even know you're training for a specific fighter. Right. Okay, that's interesting. Um, I got to ask the obvious question: Do you feel like you're being brought in to lose? You know, Brad's from Canada. He just won the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, he's you know he's he's an SBG uh, Ireland guy. It seems like they're really sort of behind him. How do you sort of look at look at it sort of from that perspective? I, uh, that hasn't crossed my mind until now, I guess, okay. but I, I would say that they, they, they picked the wrong guy to, to bring in and for him to hopefully to, to build him up. You know what I mean? They could have easily got one of these guys that, that haven't really fought anybody and, you know, Ben's first real taste of the UFC on a, a big event. This is, I, I think this is the biggest card of the year. Um, yeah, they, I, I don't think I'm, I, I could be wrong. I, I could be brought in to, 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 to lose, but I don't think that's going to happen. Like I said, that would have been a bad choice. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's not my decision or nor for me to care about. My job is to go in there and, and I, and spoil a party. I've done it before. No, of course. I just—I was going to say—it uh, reminds me of the Mitch Gagnon fight. You know, a Canadian guy who's actually from Toronto. Uh, you know, you went in there and you dominated him. So, uh, another uh, interesting scenario here. And Eduardo in Brazil in Rio. That's so. true. Yeah, that seems to be your thing. That, that's true. Spoiling the. Party. I guess so. I guess I can't fight in my hometown anymore, right? <laughs> you that's just got to fight in everyone else's gotta... backyard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Um, how much do you feel like experience will play in this fight? Because, you know, you fought for RFA heading into the UFC. You fought a bunch of fights already in the UFC. Brad, this is his second fight, a weight class down. And he fought primarily on the Canadian regional scene, which, you know, let's be honest, not not exactly top flight competition. Do you feel like uh, your experience will play a factor in this fight? Yeah, yeah. You try to take everything away from uh, every fight previous, you know, and I have obviously more fights than him to, t- to draw from to draw from like criticism and technique and, and figure out, you know, where I went wrong. So I think, I think that's going to play a little bit of a factor, but um, ultimately he's a fighter. He, he's proven himself on the ultimate fighter. He proved himself on his, on the, his fights before that. So um, I don't, I don't want to go in thinking that I have an advantage over him in, uh, in that area. And maybe he's just, he's mentally there and mentally ready and the crowd's not going to bother him fighting. in um, I don't know where it really, where he's from, but fighting in his home country, uh, won't bother him. Maybe none of that stuff's going to get to him. And he's just going to, he's going to come out and just like he's fought every other fight. So, or the crowd could get to him. I, I don't know what's in his mental or his psyche. So I can't, I can't speak for that. But, uh, as far as me having advantages experience, I, I think a little bit. Okay. And I'll give you a little context here. He's from Winnipeg, but he, he lives in Ireland and trains at SBG now. So, uh, and Winnipeg's so not really far? close to Toronto. So it's not like oh, he's going to okay. have a, you know, okay. a ton of Winnipeg people coming. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It, it's a bit of a hike. Well, I, but, but Canadians are famous for backing, backing our guys, no matter where th- they That's true. Yes. Canada, we are passionate. Canada, so. We get that from hockey. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Um, training camp, uh, you know, you obviously have some great coaches, great training partners. Uh, is it just sort of the same guys as far as bodies in, in the gym and everything? No, so uh, 
uh, my coach Trevor opened up his own. Uh, his his boxing gear is really taking off, you know, uh, gloves and he's been working on. So he decided to open up his own little private shop, which is more more towards the equipment side of, of what he's doing. And now there's like a small area for us to. Uh, right. So uh, he opened that with me, Justin. Rose is in there sometimes, but we actually um, switched over to Elevation. We go spar with the Elevation Fight Team now. So me and Justin do. And and man, I I I honestly don't think I've ever grown from sparring as much as I have now. They just have so many quality guys in there that every round you're you're getting really good work. So and the uh, fighters, everybody's been more than welcome and. To that to that gym and big shout out to elevation that's great who, who are some of the guys you get to work with uh you working with like neil magny drew dober guys like that yep uh, D- dober magny's in there um cory sanhagen's probably probably been like my best partner and he just he's so uh stylistically different and, and than anybody really and, and he brings weird angles and and some some funky fancy stuff that that's uh that's it's just fun to go with him he's such a good partner such a good partner um but then you got like guys like austin hubbard who's fighting uh the main event for lfa soon and then uh another guy lavelle simpson who's fighting tomorrow for lfa lfa um in phoenix i believe yeah all right i can't remember no no you're right that's Um, that's the phoenix card that's coming up here this friday yeah yep so he's he's fighting on that card. Um, there's just there's just so many high level guys. Drew Dober, and then you get all the guys that just come in. Uh, Jose was at uh, Torres Shorty. He was there for a month, and I got to spar with him every Tuesday and Friday. Um, he's definitely a good good partner. So there's just a lot of quality dudes in there, high level dudes, and then hungry up and comers as well. So on that note, who's going to be in your corner for this fight? Uh, Justin, Trevor, and my uh, Muay Thai coach Luke. Excellent. And how do you see this fight playing out on the eighth? Uh, you always you're always in entertaining fights, but how do you sort of see it unfolding? Um, again, I um, it's going to be an entertaining fight. I don't. I'm not going to sit back and 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 play the point game. I'm going to come at him. Um, I have a lot of not new things I've been working on, but I I think I I think I figured this MMA game out. I think I I got it. I, I kind of figured it out. So I'm just interested or excited to go in there and, and showcase the, the skills I've, I've gained in the last eight months, you know. So wherever it goes, he's not – I hope he knows he's not a better grappler than me. He's not going to outgrapple me. So his best chance is on the feet, and that plays into my hand as well because I, I've been working. I've been working really hard on my hand. So um, it's going to be a difficult fight, I know. I know he's a tough guy, so I'm prepared. I'm prepared to put him out on his feet or or on his back. So either way, I'm getting my hand raised. And I don't want it to go three rounds. No, you don't want to go to the judges, of course. Um, we've had a lot of stuff happening in MMA right now. Most importantly, the, the, the trade for Demetrius Johnson for Ben Askren. Just your reaction when you heard that all go down and, uh, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. I was very surprised. And um, at first I felt... I, I kind of felt bad for Demetrius Johnson because I didn't I didn't know the whole context of of the trade and what was the what was the issue with you know kind of foreshadowing the 125 pound division being being cut and uh, so I kind of felt bad for him I was like man they didn't really give this guy his his dude. he's the he's the greatest fighter of all time in my opinion um and they just didn't really give him give him what he he rightfully earned, you know, he, he rightfully earned that title. I don't think he was getting paid as much as he would like to. He wasn't getting the publicity that he would have liked to. So, um, but after I read it, he wanted to be out. He would rather be at one and it's, it's, it brings new life into the 170 pound division. So all in all, I think it was a, it was a, a good trade for both parties, but it sucks to see him go. Yeah. No, no, I hear you on that. Um, we're, we're looking forward to this fight, man. This is a stack card, like you mentioned. I can't wait. UFC 231, December 8th. Uh, Matt, always a pleasure, man. I appreciate you taking the time. Just remind people where they can find you on social media, and if you got any sponsors or shout-outs, the floor is yours. Yep. Uh, social media, Matthew Lopez 135, That's and then Matthew Lopez on Facebook. Um, as far as sponsors, it's just American Ethanol. They, you know, they've been with us for, for a long time, my management team, and they've, they help us out 
just so so much so thank you to you for you know getting our names out there and and letting this letting us talk a little bit 